Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in today's video we're going to do a what if scenario and what if our Earth had every single major moon from our solar system orbiting around it. What do you think would happen? Would it become something like this? Or would it basically be a very very mild version of this? Let's find out by using universe subback square. <laughs> And so for this simulation, we're actually going to do something a little bit different. What we're going to do is, first we're going to create uh, a new system with Earth and the Moon. And before we start adding other moons, let's actually talk about which moons we'll be adding and which moons are important. So we're actually only going to concern ourselves with the 18 so-called major moons of our solar system. And these are the moons that are basically spherical. These are the moons that would actually have been considered to be planets if they were not orbiting around another larger planet. There's actually 18 or possibly 19 of them because one of them is kind of right on the border. And the first one is obviously our own moon. This is technically a planet if Earth was not around. It's spherical, it has its own um, relatively powerful uh, gravitational field and it's uh, essentially able to maintain its shape without help of anything. Now let's add um, the other moons starting with, well actually let's add non-major moons first. Mars also has two moons, these are called Phobos and Deimos and they're actually, well technically they're not really moons, they're probably very most likely captured asteroids. But we're going to add them just because they are there and you should know about them. And in this video, I actually wanted to make sure that you don't just see me explode things, but you learn about various moons, uh, various major moons from our solar system. So maybe in this video, you'll discover some moons you've never heard of before. Next on the list is Jupiter, and we're going to add the four Galilean Jupiter moons. Uh, they're named Galilean uh, because Galileo discovered them a long time ago. And the first one here is going to be Io. This is the volcanic moon um, of Jupiter, very, very, very beautiful and super highly radioactive. There's also the largest moon in our solar system known as Ganymede. This moon that just suddenly changed its color for some reason um, is actually larger than our moon and it's practically larger in terms of size at least than Mercury. You can place Mercury inside. It's not as massive though, but it is definitely the most massive and the most large moon in our solar system. Callisto is next uh, and Europa is after it. Callisto and Europa, well actually as well as the Ganymede, are considered to be ice moons. Uh, Europa is particularly interesting because it has a very very large ocean underneath all of the size and it's actually very likely to be larger than the entire amount of um, water on our planet Earth. That's the four uh, Jupiter moons we're going to add out of about 67 available to us on Jupiter. Let's go with Saturn. Actually, let's see if this orbits first. Yeah, it looks, it looks fine. All right, good. Let's go with Saturn. Saturn is next. And here we actually have six moons. Let's start with some of the minor ones. We have a moon called Mimas. This one actually kind of looks like the Death Star from Star Wars, but unfortunately not in this game because it doesn't have enough textures. Uh, we have moons called Dione and Rhea. And these are all ice moons, very similar to Europa. We have a moon called Iapetus, which is, uh, I believe this is the second or third largest moon around Saturn. And, okay, it doesn't really look like this. This is kind of procedurally generated, but it is a relatively large moon nevertheless. And we also have a moon called Enceladus, which is right here. So, uh, Enceladus, Mimas, um, Dione, Rhea, Iapetus, and there's one missing. I believe this one is not on the list here, so we have to look up the moon by the name of um, Tethys. And there it is. So that's the six. Oh, no, no, wait. That's not six. That is six. There's seven, though. I'm totally forgetting one. I'm forgetting the most important one. Titan. This is actually my favorite moon ever. Titan has to be on the list. Now, why is Titan so important? And why, it's, why is it my favorite? Well, because... First of all, this is the only other object in the solar system that has atmosphere strong enough for us not to die. Uh, the atmospheric pressure here is about 1.3 atmospheric pressures, I believe. I think that's 1.3. It, it, this is a little bit lower, but it's not, um, it's not correct. It's about 1.3 uh, atmospheric pressures. And it also has liquid oceans on it, but they're actually made of methane and other um, carbohydrates. So, uh, carbohydrates? I meant to say hydrocarbons, huh? 
completely the opposite thing of what I wanted to say. Anyway, so things uh, that are made of carbon and hydrogen are essentially um, liquid here, for the most part, because it's really, 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 really cold. It's one of the coldest places in our solar system. So Titan is the last moon of Saturn we're going to add, and now we're going to go to Uranus with its um, five major moons, and all of them are named after Shakespearean characters. So first one is Oberon, Miranda, Umbriel, Ariel, and lastly Titania, which I guess is the feminine version of Titan. Maybe they're related. I don't think they are because this is from Shakespearean uh, books and this is from, I believe, uh, Roman mythology or possibly Greek mythology. Anyway, so that's um, Uranus and next on the list and the last on the list is Neptune. And the only moon that is important from Neptune is the moon called Triton. Now, this is a very interesting moon because we think it's actually a captured dwarf planet. It's very, very large, and it orbits in a completely opposite direction of other moons of um, Neptune, and it's one day going to collide with Neptune as well. It's not very stable, um, and it's slowly going to degrade its orbit. So, Triton is the last, and all of these moons are actually relatively large in size, but there's going to be number 19 that we're going to add here, and that's, go that's going to be Proteus, which is also from Neptune, and Proteus is essentially right on the border of what we consider to be a major moon. It's just large enough to kind of look spherical, but at the same time, it's kind of small to be not a perfect sphere, but we're going to place this here anyway. Now, before we run the simulation and see what kind of chaos we create in this new Earth-Moon system, let's look at the chart and compare their sizes. So let's uh, go away from the Sun, zoom in to Earth, and take a look at all of the other moons. So look at how big Ganymede and Titan are. They're ridiculously large. So that's the moon of Jupiter. This is the moon of Saturn. The next uh, on the list is Callisto, Io, uh, moon, our own moon, and Europa, and so on and so forth. And in descending order, here they all are. Very, very beautiful. Some of them don't actually look like this because the game sometimes procedurally generates uh, certain moons, especially if it don't, don't really have their texture. Uh, from NASA, like for example, some of these moons we've never been to. And lastly, the last two are tiny, tiny asteroids, um, Phobos and Deimos, the so-called moons of Mars. So, that's them. I believe there is, what, like 21 of them here, I think, if I did my math correctly. And so now we're going to go ahead and release the hounds. We're going to press the play button and observe the ensuing chaos. So, chances are, larger moons will attract smaller moons and will create collisions. I'm going to actually just uh, zoom into one of the larger moons, like for example Ganymede, and watch everything from its own perspective. And we're going to wait for maybe, I don't know, a few weeks, a few months, and see what actually happens. Because I don't think this is... Oh, here comes the first collision, right? What is this? Uh, oh, wow, okay, so it's going to be Ganymede and Callisto. First collision happened to be one of the largest moons colliding with the largest moon. Oh, and look at that. It actually turned into liquid ocean. So this will probably accelerate pretty quickly and escalate dramatically to the complete destruction of this very unstable uh, system. So uh, a planet like Earth would not really be able to maintain so many moons by itself. Most of them would either collide with one another or fly out into the outer system and possibly get captured by other planets. But a planet like Jupiter can actually easily hold all of them, and possibly even more. But anyway, so, here come more collisions. And interestingly, even though I placed them in orbit around Earth, it looks like all of these moons, for, or uh, most of these moons, assumed their own orbits. They're not even orbiting around Earth anymore. You can kind of see that they're actually sort of flying away from us slowly. At least, uh, Europa is. And uh, some of them are kind of orbiting, but in not in a very, not in a very stable orbit. And we can maybe check if they do have stable orbits here by looking at this. As you can see, the orbits are totally changing all the time. And at least uh, three of them have already left the um, Earth system. But let's just accelerate time a little bit more and watch this unfold as more and more of these moons either depart from Earth or collide with one another. I'm hoping that Ganymede decides to collide with someone else, or something else, and I'm hoping that maybe some other moons here decide to kind of create some chaos as well. And also, I actually want to see what happens to Titan, because I believe it might have actually become 
uh, very warm by now. Oh yeah, look at that. It's 8 degrees Celsius. And it's totally, totally terraformed. Well, the chances are that Titan is actually completely covered in liquid water now because for the most part, underneath all of that methane ice is probably water ice. So the methane is going to evaporate and create a lot and a lot of liquid oceans that I'm going to try to add here. So underneath all of this is liquid water somewhere out there. I think I can possibly remove the atmosphere and show it to you, but huh, it's frozen. Interesting. Did my atmosphere disappear? No, still there. That's very interesting. For some reason, Titan has suddenly decreased in temperature. All right, so nothing interesting is actually happening in this particular simulation. So maybe let's up the stakes a little bit before we finish this video. Let's go to a completely new system known as Earth and the Moon, ignore the Sun, and place everything between the Moon and the Earth. And then we'll see what happens. And so here we go. This time they're all going to be orbiting around Earth. And we're going to see what kind of collisions we can actually expect here. And uh, in this case, we're also going to enable something here. We're going to enable... And so here we go. No collisions so far. All of uh, those moons, specifically I believe 21 of them, seem to be orbiting just fine. Although I have a feeling one of them just flew away because of the gravitational effects. And yes, Stamos is gone. Something just collided right here. I believe it was uh, Tethys and something else. Here comes the chaos. Goodbye, Tethys. It was nice knowing you. You seem to have been flunked off or flunked out of the system. Uh, so a lot of these moons, they will be able to basically clear all of the um, orbital pathway here. Mostly because this is how things work in, um, in the solar system. If something is a little bit heavier than everything else, it will very likely disturb the orbit of the other lighter object and either absorb it or make it fly away. And you'll see a lot of this happening here in a few minutes. And there was a very large collision just now that I almost missed between Titan and something else that was very large as well. And uh, looks like only the larger moons are remaining in a relatively stable orbit with all of the smaller ones. Uh, basically, oh, look at that. Did you guys see that? That was pretty cool. Titan completely changed its orbit just now. Uh, but yeah, only the smaller moons um, are basically being disturbed with the larger moons, uh, like Callisto here, for example, orbiting relatively close to Earth. Now, I'm still surprised that our friend Ganymede hasn't really done much. It had a few smaller collisions, but nothing major. But we'll see how this goes. And Titan is smoking. I guess it very likely collided with something else. And goodbye, Callisto. You just collided with something and totally lost your orbit. Wait, was that Titan? No, it wasn't. Did I lose Titan? My favorite Titan is gone. Yeah, I believe it's gone. Anyway... And anyway, so looks like a lot of the moons are actually gone completely. Let's run this a little bit faster and see what's left at the end. So there weren't really any major collisions like you saw in the beginning of the video, but it seems that there's definitely a lot of interaction between the um, orbital dynamics essentially, with most of the moons just kind of kicking each other out and taking their place or colliding with things. But very, very, very rarely, a lot more rare than I imagined it would happen. So, we're gonna wait maybe two, two in-game years and see what's actually left here after all of this is done settling down. And we're also going to see what happened to some of the major moons as well. And it's been practically eight years. Let's find out what has been left and what has actually happened to all of the other moons. Now, we have a few moons that decided to stay with us. We're gonna show the orbits here. And uh, one of the moons that's very, very close to our planet Earth is surprisingly Phobos. It's, uh, it's the moon of Mars that decided to kind of stick around. But Triton is also surprisingly in a very stable circular orbit, not very, very, uh, not very far from um, our planet Earth. Triton, is, if you remember, is the moon of Neptune, and Phobos is the moon of Mars. Ganymede uh, is still around as well, and this is the biggest and the most massive moon in our solar system. I guess not, nothing could actually dislodge it. it. It would be very, very difficult for it to leave the system. Io is a little bit farther away on the outskirts there. And we also have uh, our own moon that is in a slightly different, more elliptical orbit, but it's still kind of around as well. 
Now, what is this thingy that wobbles here? And that seems to be Proteus. And Proteus, if you remember, is the uh, the borderline major moon slash minor moon of Neptune as well. And uh, the last here is Enceladus with a very unusual, somewhat unstable, very eccentric orbit around our planet. And I think, oh, okay, so it might actually be escaping from the Earth system as well. Everything else, on the other hand, as you can see, flew away, including things like Tethys, Rhea, um, Callisto, and, and Deimos, and so on. With Callisto being really, really far away. So this is essentially what would happen if you were to place all of the major moons of our solar system around our planet Earth. You would expect a lot of things to kind of collide, some things to fly away and never return, but some moons would actually remain and stay in a stable orbit around our planet Earth, very likely changing both the um, climate, but also the dynamics on our own planet Earth. Because obviously these moons will now start causing a lot of various tidal effects and uh, produce a lot of various atmospheric effects as well. And I think I may have just noticed that we're missing a very large chunk of South America. So there might have been actually a collision right here that we totally missed. And anyway, thank you so much for watching and hopefully you learned something from this video. Hopefully now you know a little bit more about the major moons of our solar system. And now you know what would happen if you were to place them in our own Earth system between the moon and the Earth. If you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to come back tomorrow because you're going to learn something new about sp space, science, math, or you might just watch me play a video game. And anyway, thank you so much, guys. Please subscribe if you still haven't. I'll see you in the next video. Catch you later. And as always, bye-bye.